Imagine you have a line, whose length can be denoted by any variable. And, let's say that variable is x. Let me remind you that it is just a line, and it has a one-dimensional variable that is x to the power of 1. It also means that it just has length and no height or width. So, here we can be clarified that any rate of change would take place only in one direction. That is, we can only change the length of the line, and not the height or the width or any other quantity. Now let us consider something from this event. Do you see how the length of the line changes? Consider this change in length to be really very small, as I represent it with the line in the notation dx. This rate of change is almost equal to zero, but not actually zero. But in the screen I just stretches the length larger so that you can easily visualize that the length is increasing at some rate. But you have to keep in your mind that this rate of change is actually really very smaller. You might have noticed that the original length of a one-dimensional line is x and dx is the small amount of change along the original length x. Since it only increased dx let us give this new total increase as dy. You can also say that total increasing amount is dy and therefore dy is equals to dx. Therefore, let fx be any function of x. So, the derivative of fx is given by f dash of x. Here we see that the derivative of one dimensional length is always equal to its own magnitude. That means that f dash x of power 1 is always equal to 1. Here we also see that f of x can also be written as y. Therefore dy by dx is f dash of x. In order to be more clarify now, let us consider another visualization. Now instead of one dimensional line let's take a plane which has two dimensional quantity that is height and width. Say that this plane is square and has both height and width of equal size. Since it's a square we can denote its height and width with same variable. Say that variable is x as you have seen here in the figure. Also, we know the area of square is given by its side square therefore we have x square as the area of this square. In this plane the function f of x is the area of the given square. That means function f of x is equals to area of square. Previously we have seen that f of x is equals to y. Therefore we can say y is equals to the area of square. Now if you increase x by just small amount dx, you can see what happens here is the area of this square is increasing in two dimension. So let us have a look over this new area which is formed due to small amount of change dx. Here, if we break the new formed area, we see that there are three shapes. The square, and the two other seems to be rectangle, with width x and height dx which was formed due to small amount of increase in x that is dx. And we denoted those, rectangle with rectangle 1 and, rectangle 2 as you have seen. Also with, height dx and width, x. Now, we know the formula for the area of rectangle. So we just find the area of rectangle 1 and rectangle 2. We see that both these rectangles have same area that is x dx. Now since this rectangles are the increase area of that original square, we add this two rectangle to find the total amount of increased area.
we see that when we add up those rectangles the total increase in amount is 2x dx. Therefore, we can say that dy is the total increase in area. This means that if x is increased by small amount, dx then the area of the square will increase by 2x dx. So here the derivative of the function f of x which is the area of square is 2x which can be written as f dash of x or dy by dx. Have seen that one dimensional line which we denoted by x has derivative simply one and the derivative of two dimensional area of the square x square is 2x. Also, if we take the derivative of x cubed that is the derivative of three-dimensional cube we end up getting, 3x square. We see, that volume of this cube is equals to x cube. So if we increase x by small amount, dx this will cause the volume of the cube to increase in all its three dimension, and three small cuboid will form with, height and length of same size that is x, and that the width of this cuboid is dx. Here we see that, the total increase in volume due to increase in small amount of dx, are this 3 cuboid, which are colored in yellow. Now if we calculate the volume of each cuboid, and add them up all together, let's see what happens. We see here that, total increase in volume dy due to dx is 3x squared dx. So we can say that the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Also, let me remind you that this derivative is denoted by dy upon dx or f dash of x. So we generally says that, to find the derivative of any function fx, we take its exponent, multiply it by the coefficient, and decrease the exponent by 1. Also we have seen its visual interpretation, for a line, plane and cube, so for higher order dimension we can conclude that, the visual interpretation is same, as for x to the power 1 x to the power 2 and x to the power 3. In general this is called the power rule of derivative, and it is denoted by this given formula. Using this power rule, we see that the derivative of x square is 2x which we have already shown by visualizing the area of square. 